that this celebrity of the hotel world was only named the Balmoral in the 1990s. It started life over a century ago as the North British Station Hotel, and all because of the railways. The railways developed primarily in the first instance um, to transport goods, you know, heavy goods like coal, for example. But very quickly they learned that uh, passenger transport was an important money earning capacity. And throughout the latter half of the 19th century, uh, really we had railway companies opening up all around the country um, and all falling over each other in order to, to grab that custom. At the end of the line, in the big cities, the railway companies started building their own grand hotels to capture the business from this new fashion for passenger travel. That phrase railway hotel may conjure up in your mind uh, the image of something a little drafty and unprepossessing, but actually the, the railway hotels were impressive and glamorous spaces. London's first grand railway hotel was the Great Northern in King's Cross, built in 1854. In 1878, York got the Royal Station Hotel. In 1883, Glasgow got the Grand Central Hotel. But Edinburgh was late to the party. And the railways first arrived in Edinburgh in the 1830s, but they were all on the periphery of the town, on the south side of the city and in Leith. And they didn't arrive in the city centre until the 1840s. The North British Railway in the 1890s, of course, opens uh, Forth Bridge bringing in huge numbers of passengers into the city. Because you've got this railway station in the centre of town in Edinburgh, um, it's exceedingly busy. And what the railway company hadn't really appreciated was the sheer volume of passengers that were itching to use the trains to travel north. Waverley Station in Edinburgh had grown as passenger traffic had grown. And in the 1890s, it was decided by the board of the North British Railway that Edinburgh needed a hotel to advertise the power, authority and reach of the railway. It was a bit of a latecomer compared with some of the other English railway hotels, but that meant, I guess, that they felt they had to make it even bigger, even more dramatic. People who travelled by rail were pretty wealthy, so they expected somewhere smart to go to when they arrived. If you were a first-class passenger arriving from the North British Railway, you would have come off your first-class compartment and be ushered into a lift, going straight up to that bridge there. It still survives today. It would have been top lit, full of vines and plants, but you were a